to uh, present the complete unilateral credit lip repair. I think this is a, a very common uh, practice that you guys are doing in your in your practice. Now, the key point in uh, tonight's presentation is that uh, th this is a specifically uh, for complete credit lip uh, because complete and incomplete they are uh, they are different. Uh, for example, uh, in in the complete crab, uh, we have to reconstruct the nasal flow and also the intraoral lining uh, in the uh, in the piriform area. Uh, so uh, I would uh, separate complete and incomplete. Uh, certainly, if I have uh, a chance next time, I uh, talk about incomplete uh, credit repair. Now, the key point uh, uh, also uh, name the design of the lip and nasal flow reconstruction, intraoral lining, and very important is the muscle-driven repair. Uh, certainly, uh, we emphasize uh, nasal overcorrection, and also the post-operative care is important. I think uh, one of the, uh, the key points uh, for the success in Chang'an is that we have a very good post-operative care system. So uh, I hope that you guys even, uh, you have a very good surgical skill. Uh, you still have to be uh, focused on your post-operative care, uh, including the wound care and the parent education so that you will have a, a, a better uh, outcome. So in this video, I, uh, my focus in the design, in the nasal floor, in the muscle, and also the, the nasal reconstruction. Uh, and, uh, and following it, I will uh, present uh, the video. Now, I think the name is important uh, for complete uh, clear lip where the, uh, when the alveolus is wide separated. Uh, you can see in this case, uh, uh, the before and after the, uh, the name, uh, the, the nasal morphology has become better and also the alveolar separation uh, are closer to each other. So when we repair the nose, the nasal flow, certainly we have less difficulty uh, in the reconstruction of the nasal flow. So if we have name, that's good. If you do not have a name service and you, and you can also do something else such as uh, taping or the change of the slip position uh, in order to bring the, uh, the uh, alveolar segment uh, closer together. Now, the design, uh, I think uh, I use a very simple design that just a, a traditional uh, rotation advancement uh, uh, caloplasty design. And I do not do uh, lip measurement because you can always uh, notice that uh, the crab side medial lip is much shorter and also the lateral lip segment also is, is more hypoplastic. Uh, it's shorter in vertical as well as in horizontal dimension. So uh, you really uh, just focus on the so-called the consistent uh, design, do not change anything. Uh, later on, I will uh, mention about the design in the video. And certainly I do not do uh, much change uh, in terms of the design. So this is just a rotation advancement, uh, c flap, uh, and also uh, the design on the lateral lip along the skin border. And that is uh, between the skin and vermilion junction. <clears throat> So uh, this is the case uh, in the video, uh, the, uh, the design. And as I mentioned uh, in the last slide, uh, this is the exactly the same design, uh, the curvilinear uh, design and also in the lateral lip along the skin border with the vermilion and uh, the, the upper margin of the columella base is in the middle, middle so-called the, the subnasal, subnasalis point uh, of the columella base. So I 
uh, we don't need to do uh, so-called uh, so uh, the uh, the lengthening uh, effects such as uh, the uh, over uh, over cutting or cutting to the columnar base like a molar design. So uh, just focus on uh, the muscle dissection. I think the muscle uh, dissection will help to bring the, the skin part more uh, downward for the lip lengthening. Now let's talk about the nasal flow uh, and intraoral lining. Uh, certainly we need some mucosa uh, for covering the peripheral margin uh, for uh, adding tissue uh, in the flow area. Now we, uh, we prefer to use uh, uh, so-called so inferior turbinate mucosa thread uh, because uh, uh, in the complete crab, uh, we can easily uh, uh, do the, uh, have gain the access to the inferior uh, turbinate. So we cut the mucosa and, and then we can save all the uh, intraoral mucosa for the uh, intraoral lining so that we have abundant tissue for the intraoral. And we also have the mucosa thread from the turbinate uh, for the nasal flow and also uh, for the covering of the peripheral margin. Now, uh, people argue that why do you uh, use a uh, turbinate thread uh, instead of the mucosa thread, so-called the L thread? Uh, I feel that if we can keep uh, the the intraoral mucosa for the intraoral lining and use the turbinate thread. I think with our intraoral lining, as you can see in this case, that we have abundant uh, a good uh, volume of mucosa tissue for the intraoral lining. So this is one thing that uh, not many surgeons focus, but I think if you can practice, uh, you do careful uh, turbinate thread dissection and you can harvest the turbinate thread uh, with the nasal flow for the, uh, for the intraoral lining. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that very important is to, uh, is to use the, uh, the muscle dissection. I think uh, uh, we all know that the muscle have uh, abnormal insertion. So if we can free the muscle, for example, in the uh, medial lip segment, we cut the muscle higher uh, in, uh, into the uh, contralateral nasal flow and columella base. So we can rotate the muscle uh, lower. Uh, now the skin incision stop there in the middle point of the columella base, but the muscle dissection can go underneath the skin and go further upward. So that when you rotate the muscle uh, downward, you can gain uh, more uh, lengthening uh, in the muscle. And certainly, as I mentioned, that the skin will follow the muscle. Now, from the lateral lip segment, uh, the muscle uh, abnormal insertion is on the, uh, the, the uh, nasal mucosa. So we dissect the muscle. And then the medial muscle, the lateral muscle uh, bring together and close like a Z uh, fashion, Z plastic, so that this Z plastic muscle repair certainly help to lengthen uh, the lip. Now, this is the nasal overcorrection. As I mentioned, uh, after the mus uh, muscle repair, we certainly bring the columella base and the ala base together, and then we can do further sinting suture and the Tajima reverse U incision. So this three components, the muscle, the sinking suture, the Tajima technique uh, that help to, uh, to do the nasal overcorrection. And this is a very important uh, uh, lip repair uh, uh, technique so that uh, you can guarantee that you will have more symmetric nose uh, after this repair. Now, let's uh, look at the uh, video. Now this patient, uh, uh, he finished uh, the, the name uh, technique. So you can see the alveolar segment and the, the nose morphology become better. The first is to mark the red line. This red line is the junction between vermilion and mucosa. 
pay attention that this uh, red line, maybe follow the red line, you have a, a intermediate zone. So, but uh, you need to uh, mark this uh, the right in the, in, the, in the red line. So you can uh, match the red line uh, together. And, that, and that's the ALA base because we wish uh, that the ALA base after reconstruction, they can be at the same level at the same plane. Now this is the columnar base and also the later point of the columnar base. And then I mark the cubist ball. And many times you can see the triangle shape of the cubist ball. Then uh, the same distance decide the, the other side. Now in the later leap, uh, you mark the cubist ball peak right uh, where the vermilion become the widest. So now this is the curvy linear incision and then a vertical incision to the mucosa and then I did a, a frenulum release. And this frenulum release certainly helped to, uh, to increase uh, the intraoral uh, mucosa, uh, the flexibility. Now this is the lateral skin marking uh, just uh, along the wide skin row that is the mucosa, uh, vermilion and skin junction. Now I designed this triangular vermilion uh, uh, flap and this uh, triangular vermilion flap is about uh, two millimeter width, which is the difference between uh, the, uh, the, the dimension between the medial lip segment. Then I tattoo the landmark. So this is uh, not many landmark you need to tattoo, just uh, these uh, several uh, landmark as I'm doing here. And, and also I, uh, I only inject uh, the turbinate and the nasal flow and intraoral mucosa. Now I inject the turbinate first. Here you can see that the alveolar segment is slightly separated about maybe five millimeter. Uh, I don't wait until the alveolar segment is completely touch each other. And then I, I inject the nasal mucosa uh, intraoral mucosa, that's all. I don't inject the skin or muscle so that uh, I can have a better, better. judgment. Now, I use the a skin, skin hook uh, with the help of assistant. Then I use number 15 braid to cut uh, the skin. Now, very delicate cut and now perpendicular to the vermilion. And then uh, the C flap there. Certainly, uh, you can see the breathing. But if you can have traction, very nice. The breathing can be well controlled. Now, the mucosa incision uh, and also the muscle cutting. Pay attention that skin incision stop there, but the muscle cutting go along and up to the controllateral nasal flow. And then this is the relaxing incision in the frenulum base. And now I, uh, I, use, I gently separate the mucosa and the muscle in the medial lip. And with, again, with the traction, you can easily control the breathing. And then a very gentle undermining between the skin and the muscle. This is about one or two millimeter, not too deep, because you need to create a, a depression in the central future, okay, not, not to dissect too much in the medial lip segment. And then uh, you can see the C flap is already layer and so-called, and then the CM flap will be, will be brought together. This is the CM flap that I'm suturing. And then this CM flap uh, will be sutured behind the columella base. So with the skin hook, you can elevate the columella easily and then uh, suture the CM flap to hold the columella uh, elevation there. And this CM flap will together uh, go to, uh, uh, let go laterally to reconstruct the nasal flow uh, with the turbinate and also the mucosa flap. So uh, important, the three flap is the uh, CM flap, the, uh, the nasal mucosa flap, and the turbinate flap. Now I use a brand tip scissor to, uh, to release the air flow, just very gentle, not, not extensive. 
but with this release, you can see that the, the error base can be elevated. Now, after this uh, PFM release, uh, then we meet uh, the turbinate. Now I'm cutting the inferior portion of the turbinate here. Uh, this turbinate has been injected with the uh, epinephrine solution. So you can see uh, that the, the breathing control is quite nice. Then I use 11 bread to make a puncture between the upper and the low lateral cartilage. And then a sharp teeth scissor to cut the superior portion of the turbinate. So inferior turbinate, uh, the lower portion, the upper portion, and then I'm cutting the, the inferior portion. Okay, now I'm cutting the inferior portion. Now, after this cut, uh, I can easily elevate the turbinate flap. This is the turbinate flap that I frequently use. Uh, no, I, it's every case I use the, the inferior turbinate flap. Now there's an attached bone, I can remove the bone. By, by removing the turbinate flap and the bone, actually, I believe the nasal airway should be even more patent. Now, just elevate the nasal flow the nasal mucosa uh, together with the turbinate, you can see uh, that the air base is uh, elevated. Now I separate uh, the, uh, the skin uh, and the nasal mucosa, and then you can see that I'm dissecting the muscle because the muscle go upward to the uh, nasal mucosa. So then with the skin uh, uh, traction, I can very accurately cut uh, the, the wide skin row between the skin and the vermilion. And then uh, with this uh, incision, I can uh, start to dissect the vermilion flap. This vermilion flap uh, should include some marginalis muscle. And then again, uh, with the uh, traction, uh, then I carefully uh, do the hemostasis. And then I separate uh, in the lateral lip segment, I separate the mucosa from the muscle. And this uh, dissection is quite extensive. So the three layer in the lateral lip segment is quite, uh, quite extensively separated and very delicate. And you can see here now again, 65 scissor, uh, 65 knife to uh, cut uh, the subdermal area. So now I'm, I'm separating the muscle from the from the dermis, and I use my fingertip to provide sensation so that I can cut right in the subdermal area, so I can have a very uh, good, healthy, robust muscle flap uh, for reconstruction uh, of the of the muscle. Now this dissection also is quite extensive. Uh, Sometimes I can uh, even see the angular artery. Uh, of course, you need to. Uh, check the breathing. Now, th this is the angular artery that I'm, 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 I'm uh, you know, encounter. So uh, check the breathing. Usually it doesn't cause uh, trouble. And then uh, after this dissection, uh, I start to uh, cut uh, the vermilion flap again under traction. You can see very good uh, triangular uh, vermilion flap there. And you use 11 bread to cut the triangular flap. And, uh, uh, and then cut the excess uh, nasal, uh, the, the, uh, the lip mucosa and keep some of the marginalis muscle uh, in the triangular flap so that you can increase the volume uh, for the vermilion fullness. Now, uh, another part, uh, use sharp scissor to, uh, to remove the mucosa and uh, preserve the triangular vermilion flap. So this uh, under traction, this uh, breathing control is, is not difficult and also uh, can be very accurate. So I, because I like to uh, cut uh, all the tissue uh, and then I do the uh, approximation. So here you see uh, that again, uh, the dissection is almost complete. Uh, you see uh, the, triang the triangular vermilion flap and the marginalis muscle uh, try to uh, achieve a hemostasis. So I basically uh, finished the dissection in the medial lip and then uh, from the triangular vermilion flap, 
uh, I, I can uh, open the recipient site. I, I look at the size of the vermilion thread and I open a defect that is exactly the same size. So, and this is one millimeter uh, below the cubic spore point and then do some undermining. Uh, and then uh, I always do a relaxing incision just above the cubic spore peak that is about uh, one millimeter above the cubic spore peak. Now, this, uh, this uh, skin relaxing incision is quite helpful to lengthen the skin again. And I, I lengthen the, uh, the, the cubic spore, uh, I, I lengthen the skin and I measure uh, when I uh, leverage the cubic spore, I, I see maybe this uh, defect is about two millimeter uh, wide. So I create a two millimeter uh, triangular skin thread. This is a kind of uh, Z-plasty. So very small and delicate, uh, small skin thread. And now you see every tissue uh, has, uh, you know, has been finished. Uh, in the dissection and I see the, the, the looseness of the skin. And then uh, after I finish that, uh, then I start to reconstruct the, uh, the nasal flow and also the uh, uh, covering the prefrontal margin. Now, I, I mobilized the turbinate thread uh, to cover the prefrontal and I fix uh, the turbinate thread to the prefrontal uh, border. Now, this is a very uh, mild uh, prefrontal dissection, so it's easy to cover the raw surface uh, with the uh, turbinate thread. And I use a uh, fiber dexon to cover the, uh, to suture the, the turbinate thread. Now, <clears throat> and then I use the turbinate thread and <clears throat> suture. Uh, and I use the nasal mucosa suture with the terminal thread. So the nasal flow reconstruction basically has three, uh, three mucosa thread, uh, nasal mucosa thread, terminal thread, and also the CM thread. So I suture the uh, nasal mucosa uh, with the terminal thread. Now then this uh, lateral uh, mucosa complex will be mobilized to toward the columella base and then suture together with the CM thread uh, to have. Now, I, I, I am judging the, uh, the natural shape uh, because I need to suture this uh, uh, mucosa complex to the columella base. Now, now very carefully suture to the columella uh, base. Uh, this columella base after uh, release uh, can be elevated. So I uh, suture this uh, nasal mucosa here. And this certainly this nasal mucosa uh, in the inside is the, uh, the turbinate thread. And then uh, you see this is a very nice uh, nostril limb uh, ring reconstruction already. Now I elevate the, the deep tissue, then I suture the CM thread. Uh, laterally to the uh, nasal mucosa in the turbinate thread. So this will help to support the nasal flow. And certainly uh, in the future, nine years later, we do the ABG uh, in this uh, alveolar crab area. There's no problem uh, in the dissection. So no problem at all. Uh, do not worry about the turbinate thread uh, and the, the nasal mucosa thread here. So you can see that uh, the nasal flow is well supported and I'm um, uh, gradually close uh, this uh, three uh, composite mucosa thread. And you can see below this uh, closure is the small uh, alveolar uh, defect. This will be the future uh, nasal alveolar uh, fissure with the alveolar crack uh, that will be close at three, nine years of age uh, with the alveolar bone grafting. Now, finish the nasal flow uh, reconstruction. I continue to suture the muscle. Now, this is a full suture muscle on the muscle. The first suture, I use a small needle, PDS50. Uh, first is to suture uh, the marginalis muscle. And uh, check here that I always check the level of the cubic spore that they should be at the same 
label same print. Now, second suture, I suture the uh, the the posterior part of the muscle, uh, and then to the anterior part of the muscle in the medial lip. So now I can create a central uh, dimpling, and also the lateral elevation for the future reconstruction. Now the number three muscle suture again the lower portion, uh, lateral lip, and then the upper portion the medial lip and certainly you can catch the subdermal area to create a depression or dimpling in the middle and again this is uh, to use a five or a small pds so this is the number three suture and then the number four suture is the uh, the muscle z plasty now i suture the muscle here all the way to the control lateral part because the the medial muscle has been uh, rotation down, so there is some defect uh, in the uh, in the controlator nasal flow and also the columnar base. Now I use the subcutaneous uh, suspend uh, sustaining suture. We call it triple S subcutaneous sustaining suture SSS, and this is very strong uh, muscle suture that help to keep uh, the tip of the Z uh, muscle Z plasty and also to feel the defect uh, in the columnar base. So it's a very nice uh, muscle suture that also help to uh, bring the columnar base uh, and also the, the air base together. Now, this is the thin chin suture. Uh, and a, a, again, a subcutaneous pass, uh, subcutaneous sustaining suture uh, from the columnar base, uh, uh, from the air base to the columnar base. Uh, notice that I already mark the area crest AC point uh, before the surgery. So subcutaneous uh, cinching suture uh, from the area base uh, to the controlateral columnar base. So this, uh, again, this cinching suture help to uh, bring the, uh, the this nostril flow, which is columnar base and error base together and slightly over correction so that uh, you can see here the, uh, uh, the, the nasal flow will become narrow and also you can check here that uh, uh, after the cinching the actually the lower lateral college has been uh, curved and moved upward this is uh, like an arch uh, because if you bring the two foot together certainly the lower lateral college has to go upward. And so that uh, later on, we will do uh, the reverse U incision to uh, to release the lower lateral college. Now I tie the cinching suture first. And uh, uh, this is a 5 uh, PDS absorbable suture. Now after the, the cinching suture, <clears throat> now I start to tie the uh, the skin suture, the muscle suture, excuse me. And I always use a small single hook to mobilize the two uh, cubic ball landmark downward, just to make sure that it is in the same level. So this is the first uh, marginalis muscle suture. Uh, very careful to always pay attention to the, the level of the cubic ball. Uh, pick the, they should be at the same level with the controlator side. Now the second muscle suture. After this uh, second and third muscle suture, you can see that uh, the future reconstruction uh, is already there. The that is the central part of the future uh, becoming depressed and lateral part becoming elevated. This is the number three suture. And then uh, the number four suture, this is the, the Z plasty suture. And uh, uh, always use the two single hook uh, from below to uh, to track, uh, do traction so that the cubic ball pick should be together. So you can see here after this cinching suture, uh, seems that the C thread uh, is not, is not uh, useful at this time. So I suture the cubic ball pick uh, first. And again, uh, always uh, uh, pay attention that the, the level 
of the cubispor peak. This is Sevenol Dexon, and a very nice uh, small suture that can be used. Uh, certainly, if you want to use the Sixo, uh, Sixo Fast or Sixo Dexon, I think that's also uh, okay. Uh, if you want to use nylon, then you have to remove the suture later on. But even I use the uh, Sixo Dexon, I still prefer to use the to remove some of the suture, uh, you know, in order to use the taping. Now you can uh, pay attention that uh, I'm very carefully approximate the the white skin row together. Now I'm suturing the red line uh, together from both sides. Uh, the the white skin row, the red line has to be parallel. So the fullness of the vermilion uh, can be very nice. And now this is the small uh, triangular uh, skin thread, uh, like a, a semi limb a Z prasty. And after this, uh, uh, you can see before the surgery, actually the skin uh, dimension is very uh, short, uh, uh, inadequate. But after the muscle repair, the skin uh, can be expanded because I, I did uh, a subdermal skin dissection. Then, <clears throat> Then I suture uh, the skin together. I judge if I need to use the C thread or not. And I think in this case, uh, I do not need uh, to use the C thread. But sometimes I need to use the C thread in order to uh, create some uh, skin lengthening. Uh, but in, in this case, I think the uh, the C thread is not rely uh, is not uh, uh, is not required. And then I will judge uh, the, the future reach if I need to uh, trim. Now I trim the C thread, certainly if I can also uh, judge if I need to trim the, the skin uh, 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 in order to uh, remove the excess skin. So very careful suture uh, in the vermilion because when the, the, uh, the kids uh, grow older, then you can see uh, that the scar is very, uh, uh, very nice looking and very uh, less noticeable. Noticeable. So, so under the loop, under the loop, you can uh, put uh, the skin, uh, the the skin suture very carefully. Now, this is the uh, uh, cro uh, uh, to close the nasal flow. Uh, the C flap is trimmed, and uh, you you notice that we have uh, abundant tissue in the nasal flow. Uh, before the surgery, this is depressed. This is zero tissue there, but after this uh, 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 terminal flap and nasal mucosa flap and also the CM flap uh, support, you can see the ala base is elevated and also the nasal flow is well supported. And uh, actually, uh, this nasal flow actually uh, seems to become uh, slightly higher than the other side. And inside the nose, I use fibro dexon uh, to, to close the nasal flow here. <clears throat> so now uh, look at the uh, intraoral side. We have good amount of uh, mucosa tissue here. So and also uh, we I did um, <clears throat> a mucosa relaxing incision. So uh, I can advance the mucosa here and very loose uh, intraoral uh, mucosa uh, suture. So uh, uh, inside the mouth, the we have abundant uh, mucosa tissue here. And sometimes I will uh, I will evaluate if I need to trim some of the mucosa a little bit, but. But I think the uh, careful approximation uh, to create a smooth uh, mucosa uh, lining and also the appearance contour is very important. You don't need to, you, you don't want to see mucosa too much tissue there or uh, insufficient tissue like a depression there. So again, uh, very careful to uh, approximate uh, the intraoral mucosa. So not only the muscle, but also the inside mucosa lining uh, is carefully performed. Now at this point, uh, you notice that the, uh, oh, 
I judge, I mentioned again uh, before that if this uh, skin is too much, I can uh, excise the, the skin. Otherwise, I can also uh, approximate the skin uh, in an inverted fashion. Now, this is uh, for the columella rich, uh, columella uh, uh, lateral uh, elevation. But again, uh, you can see that the lateral skin is higher than the medial skin. So uh, you have uh, a very nice future reconstruction. And again, uh, seven or dexon suture. At this point, you can see that oh, the nose already not good. Uh, you may you may uh, consider to stop here. Then you are wrong. Uh, you need to go ahead uh, to do Tajima reverse U. Otherwise, uh, you know the low lateral cartilage is not uh, is not very nicely uh, reconstructed, and uh, you will see the tip separation. So uh, even I at this point I have a nice looking nose. I still do uh, Tajima uh, technique to uh, to reconstruct the low lateral cartilage and also the uh, the nasal tip. So uh, outside the skin and the visible uh, free border vermilion, I use seven uh, dexon. Uh, inside the mouth. And also inside the nose, uh, I use five or dexon. And uh, uh, each uh, suture, I'm very carefully approximate. And uh, I, I think this is uh, so called the cosmetic uh, 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 reconstruction at, uh, here. Uh, the, certainly, you can see a very uh, nice. Uh, the scar here is uh, is almost invisible. So, so if you do uh, pay attention to approximate the the vermilion and mucosa, certainly it is nice. And then I create a so-called external uh, skin uh, incision. So this is about two millimeter higher than the other side. So it's about thirty percent uh, uh, over correction, and there's no uh, injection of the hemostatic agent, but uh, you can see here that uh, I use the skin hook, uh, make the incision, and then uh, use a brown tip scissor to perform the dissection. This dissection is uh, between the skin and the lower lateral cartilage. The dissection is in, uh, involving uh, the, the Krebs side ailer and also uh, the other part of the ala in the medial portion. And then uh, under the skin uh, hook traction, uh, it is not difficult to dissect uh, the skin, to free the skin, to free the lower lateral cartilage underlying, because uh, we already do the cinching uh, in the button. So, so the, the lower lateral cartilage should go upward, should go forward like an arch. So if you release uh, the skin, and then and then the low lateral cartilage will go anterior or will go upward. So you can see here after the dissection, actually the skin will will move inside from outside to inside. So this is the uh, uh, the the good uh, the advantage of the Tajima uh, method that if you do this. Uh, uh, carefully, you have a very ni nice looking uh, nasal tip and also the columella, and you don't have to do intermediate rhinoplasty. You can save a procedure in the future for this, for, for this boy. And then uh, after release of the low lateral cartilage, I do uh, uh, interdomal suture. I suture the, uh, the dome between the two uh, low lateral cartilage. Uh, here, the columella base, a uh, columella lens uh, in the craft side has been lengthened, maybe uh, a two millimeter higher than the other side. And then uh, another uh, in the tumor suture. And pay attention that the uh, skin has uh, mobilized from outside to inside. So actually, the scar is not visible from outside. But now you have a much uh, higher overcorrected nostril, columella as well. So certainly uh, you don't need to do uh, intermediate renal procedure. So just a 20 minutes procedure that can save uh, a, a, 
uh, one uh, procedure, surgical procedure. Now, sometimes I, if I see that the skin part is uh, too much, uh, or you can visibly, I can see it uh, from outside, then I can trim uh, the excess of the skin uh, before I do the suture. Uh, now, of course, you can use uh, sevenodexone to suture the skin, but now I prefer to use fivodexon to do suture and very loose, uh, not not tight at all, just very loose uh, to approximate the two uh, skin together. Very uh, because the fivodexon can uh, help to hold the tissue together much uh, better than the sevenodexon. Now again, uh, do not make it tight. Uh, you don't want to see, uh, uh, you, you do not want to see a uh, so-called uh, stitch mark, uh, just very uh, proximate to hold the, uh, the two skin together. <clears throat> and uh, I, I may or may not remove this, uh, the suture here later on, maybe two weeks, three weeks, if the suture is still there then I will remove the suture uh, in the clinic. <clears throat> so, so this is uh, the end of the, uh, the video and finish all the, uh, uh, all the, uh, the rotation advancement for the, the complete crab lip here. And this is the, uh, the same patient uh, before and after uh, the operation, just as you see earlier, that uh, you have a very nice uh, reconstruction of the uh, filtrum here, central depression and lateral uh, elevation like a filtral ridge and slightly uh, elevated uh, uh, over correction of the uh, nostril here, uh, uh, higher uh, columella lens in the crest side and also after the chin, you can see the columella base uh, move uh, from the non craft side over to the craft side. And also the ala base uh, go come together with the uh, columella base together. And, and before surgery, you can see that the lateral lip segment is uh, very short, uh, hypoplastic compared to the uh, medial lip segment. But after the muscle reconstruction, after the skin repair, I didn't uh, uh, move, mobilize the cubic spot. I just maintained in the same node of point. But after dissection, after muscle repair, you can see that the skin dimension is lengthened. So this is why I mentioned earlier that we don't need to do the skin measurement, just follow, just pay attention uh, to dissect the muscle and reconstruct the muscle uh, in the Z plus infection that can help to uh, lengthen uh, the lip. So uh, this is, uh, to me, this is a standardized operative procedure. I do not uh, have much change uh, during the operation. Uh, very consistent and reproducible procedure as well as the result is very nice. And uh, uh, with the Tajima type of overcorrection, we can certainly avoid uh, an intermediate uh, rhinoplasty in the growing age. So it's a very nice procedure. And this is the same case uh, one year later uh, before uh, the name and after one year after the lip repair, uh, you see the lip uh, is nice. Actually in the crab side, uh, the cubis, the lip is even slightly longer than the, the other side and very good uh, nasal tip definition and very good uh, ailer contour. There's no uh, depression of the uh, low lateral cartilage. So, uh, and also again here uh, from the basal view, the same case uh, after uh, the operation, uh, you can uh, see that the deep and nose is uh, quite acceptable. Uh, with this, uh, I can, uh, I, I, I feel happy that also this uh, boy uh, will not need any uh, rhinoplasty until he become an adult, then uh, we, we will judge if a, a cosmetic rhinoplasty uh, is required or not. So 
I think this is uh, all my presentation. And uh, uh, again, I would em emphasize that, uh, that this procedure is quite, uh, quite standardized. So from the design uh, to the uh, skin marking, uh, muscle dissection, muscle reconstruction, uh, the future uh, uh, from uh, future uh, reconstruction uh, using the muscle and skin, and also the vermilion uh, fullness, the vermilion balance uh, using the the node of triangular vermilion flap. Uh, I think we can uh, obtain a good result. One thing I forget to mention is that uh, I also use a Botox injection uh, after the uh, right after the lip repair. Uh, for this boy, I use uh, eight to ten unit of Botox injection. I think that certainly that will help from our uh, study from our group, uh, showing that uh, it it do no harm, but it will help to uh, to uh, uh, slightly more immobilize the lip movement, and that help to uh, to uh, improve the scar formation. And uh, also uh, after the surgery. I use the lip taping uh, for six months, just a gentle uh, lip taping, a mire just in the lip area. And also I will emphasize uh, and I would encourage parents to use a nasal stand after the operation for six months. I think the parents uh, in Taiwan is uh, very well educated that they have to use a nasal stand. And I think all the baby, uh, they can, uh, they can, uh, you know, uh, can tolerate uh, after two days of, uh, of uh, adjustment, they can tolerate uh, the use of the nasal stand. So, uh, so the, uh, as, as I mentioned that the post-operative uh, care is also important uh, that uh, include uh, taping the nasal stand, uh, wound cleaning. And so these uh, are quite uh, standardized in, in our Chang'un craniofacial team. So I, Hope you enjoy the presentation and uh, and certainly welcome uh, if any question. And also, I hope in the future we can, after the pandemic, uh, I you you can uh, come come over to visit us or attend our real uh, Chang'an forum uh, in the future. Thank you. Is there any question I can answer? Uh, yes, Professor Lo, uh, thank you for your perfect uh, video demonstrations. Uh, I, I think we are all have no time to breathe to to watch your your great work. So some uh, questions have been listed in our chatting room. So for the first ones, uh, how would you correct a permanent overcorrection of the nose uh, when you do the primary the rhinoplasty? Okay, I think the <clears throat> Uh, the nasal overcorrection is uh, quite important and is uh, routinely performed in my cases. Uh, as I mentioned, I had three components that uh, help to uh, achieve nasal overcorrection. Number one uh, is the muscle reconstruction. And uh, I dissect the muscle, as I mentioned, this is the muscle Z plus G. So uh, we use the muscle to uh, pull the columnar base over to the craft side and also to pull the ala base from the non craft side approximate with the columnar base. So this is the, uh, the first component, the nasal, uh, the, for the nasal overcorrection, that is the muscle uh, repair, muscle Z plus Z repair. The second component is the, is the sinking suture. And that sinking suture, I use 5 PDX and I suture like uh, so called the subcutaneous sustaining suture and suture the columnar base uh, and the ala base together. Sinking suture is the second important component. And then number three is the Tajima uh, technique uh, reverse U incision and dissection of the overlying skin, free the skin from the underlying low lateral cartilage. So the low lateral cartilage after the cinching, they can go up, go anterior. Uh, and then you can see after the, uh, the skin release, the skin will automatically uh, shift 
and mobilize inside the nose. And that will help to, uh, to overcorrect the nostril. The nostril will become higher. And very important uh, is that I mentioned the post-operative care is to use the nasal stent uh, to, uh, to hold the nostril size, nostril shape uh, uh, for six months. And that, that is also important uh, for the overcorrection. And people ask how much overcorrection do you do? I would say that it's about two millimeters higher than the other side or uh, about 30% of overcorrection. But you don't need to worry about that. This overcorrection <laughs> will remain overcorrected. And with time, it will gradually uh, calm down a little bit. So uh, even we have to use the nasal stand to hold them, uh, uh, to hold, to maintain the, the, the shape. Uh, so uh, so post-operative use of the nasal stand is also important as well. OK. So the next question is that, uh, how, uh, Professor Lo, how do you think the subcutaneous sutures is a must for the chiloplasty? Subcutaneous suture? Yes. Well, I do subcutaneous suture only uh, in the sinting suture, the subcutaneous sustaining suture. In the lip area, uh, I don't do subcutaneous suture. In the vermilion area, I don't do subcutaneous suture because uh, uh, with the muscle repair, the skin part actually has no tension at all. The, the skin just meet each other very loosely, nicely. Uh, in this case, you can see I even trim the, uh, the excess skin a little bit so that I can approximate the skin together. So, I don't do subcutaneous uh, suture in the lip area. Okay. And uh, the third question is, do you have any clue for the symmetric, the white skin row approximation? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the white skin row uh, that I, the, the f after dissection, the first stitch I use is to approximate the white skin roll. But after this uh, uh, dissection and muscle suture, actually the skin, uh, the skin, the vermilion, they come together uh, with uh, very uh, little tension. So I, I, I suture the white skin roll first. Uh, again, I like to emphasize that uh, the underlying marginalis muscle approximation is important so that there is no tension in the white skin roll in the skin uh, suture. If there is a tension, uh, the suture will become uh, separated and you will lose the cupid spot. You will have uh, so-called the disruption of the white skin roll and, and that will not be uh, looking good. Uh, in this case, you can see uh, that the white skin roll is well preserved and also the red line also is well preserved. And you can see the fullness, the smoothness of the vermilion here in this case. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next, uh, Dr. Len, using your chiloplasty method for the lip repair, but do you know why uh, the patient's lip become two millimeters shorter after the surgery one month after? Uh, I. I always uh, mention that the muscle dissection, the muscle approximation is important. Uh, I do not measure the skin because I, I, I believe that if you have adequate muscle dissection, you have a long muscle in the medial part, you have a long muscle in the lateral part, and these two muscles come together, you can have a good uh, lengthening effect uh, and then uh, lengthen the skin. So it, actually in this case, you can see that the craft side dip is slightly longer than the non craft side. So muscle dissection, I always say that if you have post-operative uh, scar contracture, elevation of the cubic ball, uh, then I think the initial dissection of the muscle and approximation is not correct, was not correct. So. I dissect the muscle carefully. I make sure that uh, the muscle flap from both sides is, uh, is adequate and 
and long enough uh, uh, for approximation. And then I carefully uh, place, put the suture from, uh, from lateral to medial. And every moment I pay attention to the symmetry on both sides of the muscle approximation. And even uh, when I tie the muscle suture, I use two single hook to track uh, the cubic spot downward to track to to pull the 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 tissue uh, the structure uh, downward in order to approximate the the uh, uh, the uh, shoot to, to tie the muscle suture. So so uh, this uh, muscle to muscle suture should be uh, should be enough length uh, to hold the uh, the the landmark uh, without shortening. Okay. Okay, Professor Low, do you remove the suture in the dip after a few days or just leave it there? Uh, all the suture is absorbable suture, but uh, I like to remove the skin suture uh, in one week, uh, one week or two weeks, uh, because I like to I uh, use the uh, the 3M tape uh, to uh, to uh, to hold the uh, to tap over the scar, uh, but for the nose, for the vermilion, for the mucosa, I do not remove the suture; it will disappear themselves. Okay, uh, the next question is the this is a nice the nasal floor reconstruction, but uh, when you do the palatoplasty. Uh, or the, no, when you do the palate repair, do you connect the nasal mucosa from the lip repair to the mu nasal mucosa on the palatal side? No, no. Uh, for the uh, for the palate repair, I just routinely use uh, the same technique as I described before. Uh, the hard palate and uh, you know the mucosa per uh, mucoperosteal flap uh, suture together. And I use vomer thread uh, in the hard palate area in for the nasal side repair. So uh, I do not uh, use this uh, uh, the the buccal mucosa for the in the palate repair. Okay. So Professor Low, how to make the well definitions of filtral ridge? The filtral ridge. Uh, and certainly uh, you need to achieve number one, the uh, adequate muscle repair and the muscle from the lateral lip should be slightly higher than the, uh, the medial lip. And when I do the, the, uh, the muscle suture, uh, in the lateral lip, I suture the posterior part. In the medial lip, I suture the anterior part. So the lateral lip uh, will go in front of the medial lip, uh, the, in, uh, the muscle repair. And also, uh, even uh, when I catch, I use a PDF suture. When I catch the muscle, I, I, I will catch the subdermal area so that uh, I will create some of uh, some uh, so-called the dimpling or depression uh, in the center. So uh, the center part is depressed, uh, the lateral part is elevated. So this is the, uh, uh, the, the method that we reconstruct the future. But certainly this is not a dynamic uh, reconstruction. This is just uh, to create a central depression and lateral elevation. Yes. Uh, Professor Low, can you explain uh, about the formula you used in injection before the operation? Oh, I just uh, simply use uh, the uh, about uh, one percent of uh, uh, one percent of local anesthetic and plus one in one uh, ten thousand epinephrine solution, one percent zero can uh, yeah. in and also epinephrine solution one in uh, 100,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I also, I only inject the, uh, the oral mucosa, nasal mucosa, and also the turbinate flap. I do not inject the skin or muscle and also do not inject the nose. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the two more questions. Uh, in a center uh, which cannot provide the name 
procedures we do still recommend doing the tajima for primary rhinoplasty at the time of the lip repair oh certainly i think uh even we do not have you do not have name you can still uh dissect the muscle uh maybe more extensive dissection to bring the muscle together uh, but the nose, uh, the Tajima technique, uh, you still can uh, you can do Tajima technique. Uh, I, I mentioned that if you do not have name service, uh, you can do uh, maybe sleep position and maybe preoperative lip taping. Uh, that will help to approximate the, uh, the two alveolar segment together and make it narrow so that you can uh, repair the nose uh, much better. Okay, uh, we trace back the, 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 the overcorrection for the nose. Uh, once the nose was already corrected by the name devices and how much the nose should be corrected in your surgery? So, <laughs> well, well, even if you use name to correct the nose, do not forget that the lower lateral cartilage is still separated. Craft side and the non craft side between the two sides. So you still have to do uh, so called the sinting suture, the muscle repair, and also to do Tajima. Uh, in this case, you can see right after I finished the muscle repair, skin closure, the two sides of the nose already look good. But, you know, it was my uh, problem that a uh, long time ago I said, oh, it's good enough. I I can stop here. I don't need to do Tajima. I was wrong uh, because years later, you see the nasal tip uh, was become <laughs> blunted. You can clearly see the separation of the two low lateral cartilage in the tip area. So uh, even if I have a good nose uh, after skin closure, I still continue to do Tajima technique uh, in order to bring the, uh, the columella in the craft side much longer than the other side. I think this is only a, a 15, 20 minutes uh, technique, but that can save, uh, that can guarantee that you will have a well-defined nasal tip and you can save uh, intermediate rhinoplasty. And I think that this is a, a, a nice, uh, a nice uh, you know, advantage uh, for this technique. And uh, you can see here the nasal tip is, is quite nice here in, in this case. Actually, in all my case, the nasal tip uh, look very good de uh, definition. Okay, we have one more question. Uh, after primary rhinoplasty with the Tajima procedures, and uh, what is the ratio of the patients uh, who need a further secondary rhinoplasty after being an adult? Oh, that uh, depends on the parent and patient, especially patient when they uh, become adult. Uh, uh, in, in our uh, previous uh, study by Dr. Seal uh, and Dr. Uh, uh, Rafael Dana, that uh, we, know, uh, we know that uh, the, the, the nose uh, shape and size uh, remain okay, but the nasal tip projection is not enough. And uh, I think this uh, deficiency of the nasal tip projection is about uh, three to five millimeter compared to the normal control. So I always did, uh, uh, if patient uh, like to have a good uh, nasal tip projection, I would do, I would not hesitate to do an open, open rhinoplasty uh, when patient become uh, adult. And also after uh, completed uh, skeletal maturation. Uh, Sometimes you can see uh, there are also other problems uh, in the nose, like nasal dorsum, uh, nasal dorsum or nasal deviation, and also some other minor uh, lip deformity. So if they do care, uh, I can do a cosmetic rhinoplasty and also the lip revision. For what percentage? Uh, I didn't calculate, but it's really up to the patient and parent. Not certainly, uh, uh, not very high percentage, but I cannot give you the exact uh, uh, percentage. Okay, the last one. And uh, how long uh, does your liver repair uh, in average take? 
how long? Well, <laughs> if uh, if I have a fellow, I will take maybe uh, two and a half hours. If I need to uh, do further education, maybe three hours. If I do it myself alone, uh, maybe one and a half hours. Well, I used to do it very fast, but I right now I enjoy doing a, you know a nice operation and then take it uh, slowly. And uh, uh, because in Chang'an, we uh, now we don't need to be hurry to finish an operation, but uh, certainly you uh, you need to pay attention to each individual point, as I mentioned today. And certainly later on, if I have chance, I can uh, I can uh, mention again. So uh, uh, you know the the fastest operation. Uh, previously, I can finish in twenty minutes, uh, but but I do not take that as a you know uh, as a hero. Uh, so I do not recommend that you don't you do surgery very fast. Just do it a nice operation. That is more important. Yeah. Okay. I confess. I always the uh, delays the the, the procedures so for Professor Low. <laughs> okay. Uh, the one more last one. How long do you put the nasal stand postoperatively? Uh, I think that's a very important question, and it's very important that you use the nasal stand for six months. And uh, uh, I think uh, we do lip repair three months, parallel repair nine months. So this is a three, six months duration. Uh, that is the time to use the nasal stand. And uh, about eight, seven to eight months, the baby uh, start to become very active. Uh, have very good hand movement and very difficult to uh, co co cooperate. Uh, but uh, the initial three month, four month, five month, six month, it's still okay that you use the nasal stand. And I think the if you use nasal stand better, you can convince parents. I I have some friends told me that oh, in his uh, center uh, they cannot convince parents to use the nasal stand when baby cry, they surrender. But uh, I think it's uh, lucky that uh, in Chang'an, we have very uh, good operation to all the parents. Since the first day, day one, they come to the clinic, you have to do the nasal stand after the lip repair. So uh, this uh, education, uh, mental training is, is very important. <laughs> and certainly uh, parent to parent uh, consultation or their communication, uh, the they are, uh, through the media they can uh, talk to each other very easy. So I think they will uh, help each other to uh, to educate uh, the importance of using the nasal stand after the operation. Okay, thank you, Professor Low. Uh, no more questions so far. So do you, do you want to say something extra, Professor Low? To all of our friends in our webinar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I actually very uh, very happy to see all of you. Uh, I can use actually I can see you uh, in the in the image, uh, but certainly I maybe I would prefer to physically meet you uh, in the future. I can visit you in your country or you come to Chang'an uh, to to join our uh, forum symposium. And I think that uh, the pandemic should uh, very soon uh, be over. So uh, you just have to be uh, patient for another maybe one year or six months. And maybe at the end of this year, November, we can do uh, the forum and welcome all of you to, to come here. But certainly in, in the meantime, I, I always uh, accept uh, email. If you have question, uh, send me email. I, I would uh, more than happy to share with you my opinion. So do not uh, forget, uh, we are very nearby and we are friends always and uh, always uh, will uh, share the opinion. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Lau uh, for your very wonderful presentation. And uh, I also saw a lot of greeting from uh, Peru, from Philippines, from Korea, from Cambodia. I think we are a whole family in the world uh, in spite of the pandemic situations. One yeah. week later, one week later, we have another very great uh, professional doctor. Uh, Dr. Ren Chongcheng will share his experience in the treatment for the mycosia patient. Mm. 
uh, she is shy, but uh, she has a lot of uh, <laughs> she she has a lot of experience to share. I I I think you guys uh, will notice this uh, very amazing persons. So yeah, uh, yeah, and the, then you the topic is the the differences the for the treatment for the mycosia using the rib graft and the maple. So this one is very interesting. So still always welcome for all your participants seven days later. And uh, we are keeping this the platform for all of you who need it in the more further knowledge or information. Okay, thank you for thank your you. kind participation. Thank you, goodbye. Thank, thank you, you. goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye, Rafael. Bye, Dex. Bye, Sol. Yeah. Nice to see you here. Hi. <laughs> Good job.